Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we, we will be continuing our series about Is This Spirit For You? In this video, we will be focusing on Rising Heat of Sand and Stone. Now, Rising Heat's playstyle is it's going to set up the sacred sites in different lands, um, either sands, mountains, or uh, jungles, or wetlands. And in those lands with sacred sites, everything is going to be weaker. It's going to have minus one health, and it's primarily going to affect buildings. As I mentioned, you're going to be setting up sacred sites in different land types. It will be easy to set them up in sands and mountains, and then more challenging in jungle and wetlands. And then it's going to have tools that can shuttle invaders into those lands, or then cause damage in those lands, um, easily killing invaders. Looking at the starting summary, it is fairly high in, off in offense. Um, that is because it has one offensive card. It has an offensive innate, and the special rule in a way is offensive. Um, it's pretty low control. It only has a single control card with call and herders. It has very little fear, only two fear across all of its effects. Now, it does have a lot of damage, though. Defense, uh, I mean, there's some amount of bar here. That's probably because of uh, the skip here. Um, I don't really consider this spirit a defensive spirit, but it just depends on if you consider the skip to be defensive or control. And then finally, uh, it has a single utility card with Gift of Searing Heat, allowing the spirit to give energy to other spirits. So flipping the spirit board over, you'll see here the special rule, it says Blistering Heat, and this is what I mentioned earlier. In those Sacred Sight lands, invaders are going to have minus one health. Looking up here at our growth options, you'll notice that we are at zero to one and just refreshing what that means that means that um we're not going to place any presence here on our reclaim we have a two presence placement option here as our g2 and you can see it'll say in that sands and mountain and that's why the spirit is um it's fairly easy to set up sacred sites in those lands because you can always g2 to get a sacred site in there and then finally you have a g3 that's going to give you energy you'll place a single presence and then you can gain some cards and that's what this this um that one there is referring to. And this is the presence placement. So no presence on reclaim, two on G2, and then one on your G3. Overall, the tracks are pretty reasonable, maxing out at five and five with several different elements. Um, I do think, uh, unlike some bright whirlwind, this spirit really only has one way to play. So if you're a, if you're a player that likes um, several diverse strategies, this is not the spirit for you. Um, and when I mean one way to play, I mean rushing down to five plays just tends to be so favorable. And that's because you get a lot of energy off of your G3, energy off your G1. And then if you're playing solo, you can take Searing Heat for yourself for also more energy. And um, you'll notice that um, really if you ever go top track, like basically these two spots here, the Earth and the Two, um, are so weak on the Spirit. Um, it's just you never have really an incentive to go past this two. I mean, maybe England, you might be able to argue trying to get to that three, but um, England is a pretty pretty rough matchup for this guy anyway. Just reviewing the cards one more time, we have that control card with call on herders. We have a card that moves presence, so you can utilize this card with our G3, setting up those sacred sites easier. It also does damage. You have a, a ravage slash build skip, and then you have a card that can give energy to other players. Finally, we have our innate, which is just going to be raw damage, two damage to explorers, two damage, two damage, and then one damage to each invader. And you can imagine if you max this out in a sacred site land, remember everything has minus one health. That means this is going to kill all towns, all explorers, and then your four damage up here is going to allow you to kill two cities. Essentially, when you hit this innate in a sacred site land, you're going to wipe out the entire land. And this is kind of... um. This spirit is very similar to River in a way, because as you can see, River is doing two damage to each invader, which a lot of times will wipe out a land. Um, Rising Heat is just a much more balanced uh, river uh, because it requires setup. You've got to set up this innate, the or not innate, the um, you have to set up the sacred site to power up the innate. In addition, hitting this final threshold is fairly difficult with Rising Heat. So as I mentioned before, this spirit is going to be for players that want to do tons of damage. And that is because of this innate. They want to utilize their control tactics to push invaders around and then 
completely demolish them with this uh, effect. Um, you have very little fear, so pairing the spirit up with a fear spirit could be very advantageous. Defense, very little defense. So this is a spirit that, um, if you're a defensive player, if you like playing those defense, this is a spirit that really doesn't um, doesn't really combo well with those. This is a spirit that if you love to draft cards, I would um, this definitely play this guy. And that, that's mainly because we're going to be focusing mainly on that G3 and that G1. Both of these, we're going to be gaining cards nonstop. So we're going to have the constant influx of cards in our hand. Now, if you like majors, I would not pick this spirit. This is a spirit where I rarely go majors, um, only when I'm extremely desperate um, or maybe I've gotten lucky with, I've gotten like an influx of energy. But um, a lot of times this innate here is a major itself. So as long as you can max it out, you're killing out, you're killing an entire land. And then you also have a skip here, so you really don't need a skip major. Overall, this is one of my favorite Spirits of the Horizon expansion. Um, like I said, Sunbright Whirlwind, love that spirit. I also love Rising Heat. Um, I wish, I mean, in a perfect world, I could have been a little bit more time uh, balancing it, but I think it's in, a, it's in a pretty good spot. If you like this video, like, subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video.